Welcome to FaithWorks, the enlightening and empowering program that builds your faith to help you overcome every single challenge in this life. My name is Kaude Adeshoga. I'm your host. I want you to sit back, listen, and be blessed. God bless you. You only have one opportunity to make your mark in this life. Don't miss it. There's no second chance to return. Nobody returns. Somebody asks a question. If we don't return, what about Elijah, who they claim returned as John the Baptist? Now, Elijah was not John the Baptist. John the Baptist operated the spirit of Elijah. He says in Malachi, he says, Elijah, that spirit will return in the last days. And there are people with that same spirit, even now. And one of the things you notice about their lives, they don't have a lot of finesse. They don't have finesse. John the Baptist had no finesse. He was eating locusts. They are strange human beings. They don't have, they don't really work with protocol. They are brash. They are hard. They are men of faith. And they do great signs. They're usually alone. They don't mix. And they have that spirit of Elijah. So it is that anointing, that spirit that has returned in John the Baptist. So John the Baptist was operating the same spirit that Elijah operated. Elijah did not return as John the Baptist. No, 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 no. That's not what the Bible is saying. John the Bible, even the Bible says in the last days, the spirit of Elijah will return and it will turn the heart in the book of Malachi of the fathers to the children and the children to the fathers so that the Lord will not smite the earth with a curse. Malachi chapter 3, the last chapter towards the, um, towards the last um, verse. And so he's talking about the spirit of Elijah, not Elijah returning as John the Baptist. Amen. Now, we're moving on. I haven't established that Jesus was incarnated. We're now trying to establish about the resurrection, what happened on that fateful resurrection Sunday. The journey from the cross to the ascension to the resurrection, what transpired. Now, Jesus, when he died, he didn't just lie down in the grave. No. He, you know, if you look in Luke chapter 15, the Bible says God told, Lord Jesus told us a story of a rich man and a man called Lazarus. Now, that rich man lived sumptuously and enjoyed, sorry, it was Luke 16, not Luke 15, Luke 16. And he lived so well, and Lazarus didn't live well. The Bible says he had sores on his body and he fed the crumbs that fell from the rich man's table. Now, that's not how God wants us to live. And, you know, the psalmist said in Psalm, I think, 27, he said, I'd rather be a doorkeeper in the house of the Lord than live in a tent of wickedness. So it's better to be a doorkeeper and be in heaven than to live in hell. But would you really want to be a doorkeeper when angels should be doorkeeper? So Lazarus, if you look at that story, was an errand boy in heaven. And Abraham was a father figure in heaven. The scope is vast. Conquer your challenges. Don't run away from giants. Don't run away from your Goliath. Defeat your Goliath that is before you. Glorify God on the earth. There's an eternity to gain. Look, we are all the same, but we are not all equal. Bible says, and many will sit with Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob at the Lord's feast. Meaning, Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob are going to have prime positions on that table. Not everybody will have prime positions on that table. And that's because of the way they live for God on the face of the earth. When we get to heaven, some will have crowns of glory. James chapter 1 verse 12, crowns of life. Some will have 2 Timothy 4 7. Peter, uh, Paul said, I've, I've fought a good fight. I've kept the faith. I've finished my race. Now it's given to me the crown of glory. No, no, crown of righteousness, sorry. There's a crown of righteousness. In the book of Revelation 19, he said, I saw Jesus, the word of God, riding on a horse on his head with many crowns. And I can assume the crown span from earth to heaven. Millions of crowns upon his head. And each crown represented conquests, medals, rewards on this earth. We're going to be rewarded. Don't just live anyhow. Live for God. There's a reward seat in Isaiah 61. 
He said, he has given me the garment of salvation and the robes of righteousness. Some in heaven are going to wear garments. If you wear garments, you wear garment to sleep. You don't wear garment out. Garment is that transparent, very light. Robe is 100% cotton. It's gorgeous. So some will be wearing garments in heaven. Some will be wearing robes. In Revelation chapter 4, say, I saw a multitude standing. Some will be standing in heaven. And I saw elders on thrones sitting. Some will be sitting. I want to be sitting. I don't want to be standing. The Bible says in that revelation, they were waving palms. I don't want to be waving palms in heaven. I want to have medals, gold, incense, glorifying God in heaven. So the way you live is going to determine what's going to happen to you and the reward you're going to get in heaven. Everybody's going to have mansions and there are going to be things in that mansion. That's why the gods, I, I want to encourage you, come to the realm of the gods where they don't discuss about giving of tithe or not, but where they discuss who you give it to. In the realm of the gods, we don't contemplate whether to give. What we contemplate is who to give it to that is authorized by God to receive on behalf of God. If you pay your DSTV or your GoTV subscription to any agent anywhere in Nigeria, so long as it's authorized by DSTV, even in a village, once you have paid your subscription, the DSTV headquarters will send you a message that your subscription has been accepted and you are now back online and you can start receiving pictures from them and watch it. So what is important is that you don't give, you, you don't pay your subscription to a fake agent. What is important is not about tithe and offering. Don't get distracted with such. What is important, giving it to an authorized agent by the Almighty, that when you have given it to him, heaven will record, oh, you gave this to God, and because of that, you are qualified for this gift, which is waiting for you in eternity. Come to the realm of the gods, not where they argue, should I give tithe or, no, 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 no. The only argument is, who do we give it to? Who has heaven authorized to collect his gift on his behalf? That when you give it, the Bible says a thousand years after you have died, your gift is still speaking like Abel. That he though being dead, yet his gifts are speaking. So if someone tells you not to give, he is preaching a doctrine of demons because he's telling you to do, not to do what Jesus asked you to do. But that's just by the way. Back to our message again, when I said Lazarus, and Abraham, just to buttress the fact that there is an eternity and what happened when Jesus died. Now, the Bible says the rich man died and he was buried, meaning his body was in the grave. But he was now in hell, meaning his spirit and his soul was full of activity. Now, the Bible says Lazarus too died and he was buried. Obviously, worms will eat the body because it's going to decompose. But the Bible says Lazarus was in Abraham's bosom. So when Jesus died, his body was in the grave. But he was doing something. What was he doing? That rich man was having a conversation in hell with Abraham who was across hell in paradise. And he was telling him to send Lazarus that he was in torment. So when Jesus died on that cross, what happened between Good Friday and Easter Sunday. Ephesians chapter 4, I read from verse 8 to 10. Wherefore he saith, when he ascended on high. So when Jesus died, he went up first. He led captivity captive, gave gifts unto men. Now he that ascended, what is it? But he also descended first into the lower parts of the earth. So when Jesus died, he first went up into space. His spirit and his soul left his body because the Bible says they put his body in the grave that was meant for Joseph of Arimathea. So his body was in the grave. Now when people die, their body is just on the floor in the grave. Their spirit and their soul goes to the place of eternal abode. And sometimes if you want to know whether a person has gone to heaven or hell, look at the face on the body. Just as a person is about to die, he begins to see where he's going, whether it's heaven or hell. Say scriptures, when Stephen was being stoned and he was about to die, Bible says he looked up and saw Jesus standing at the right hand of God and his face shone like an angel. And remember, I've been to the mug like that several times, maybe with people who lost a loved one to comfort and everything. And when they bring the body out, you see someone with a smile. You know they made heaven. You see some looking very angry. You know they were wrestling with demons. 
They didn't want to go. The demons were dragging them. They were struggling. So it was a struggle. And you could see that expression. That's the last expression on their face. You see some very peaceful. They don't even look there. They look like they're sleeping. That means they entered into the spirit of peace. That means, the, that means the angel of God came to usher them into heaven. So um, the body remains in the grave. So Jesus' body was in the grave from that Good Friday. Then his spirit and his soul went up first. That means the way to hell is that when people die, whether they're going to heaven or hell, they all go first out of the earth space into space. Then when they get into space, there are tunnels on top of the earth. They are spinning. They go down from those tunnels. This is a record of people who have died, who, go, who, who woke up back, who were on their way to hell. If you read the book of Kenneth Hagin, I went to hell. He died and he came back alive. He died about three times and he came back to life. And it was the third time he now gave his life to Christ. He would have entered hell and it would have been over for him. So he went up first, then went into the dark tunnel that took him straight into hell. Now, why did Jesus have to go into hell? Because he bore our sins. He had to carry our sins. And if he was carrying our sins, then he couldn't go to paradise. He had to go to hell. And it's all planned by God for our redemption. So the Bible says, he went first, ascended, in verse 9, then he descended into the lower parts, into hell. Hell, the book of Proverbs tells us, hell is in the lower part of the earth. So when people are going to hell, don't make a mistake, you see them going up, they are still going to hell. And those who are going to heaven all go up first. Then when they get into space, then those who are going to hell will now enter the tunnel and start going down. While those who are going to heaven will continue going up because heaven is up, 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 up. They call it the third heaven. Good. So Jesus went to hell. That's confirmed. Now, what did he do in hell? Now, we must also remember he didn't... Jesus died in the evening. He didn't stay long in hell because he didn't stay till the next day. So he must have stayed in hell for just a few hours, probably under three hours. Why do I say that? In Luke 23, we're just trying to find out what happened between that Good Friday and that fateful Easter Sunday morning. He was not locked up somewhere and his body was just floating. No, he was doing a lot of work. In Luke 23, I read from verse 39. Here Jesus was hanging on the cross and there were two thieves, one on his right and one on his left. And one of the male factors which was hanged rallied on him saying, if you are the Christ, save yourself and save us. But the other answering rebuked him saying, don't you fear God, seeing that you are in the same con you are in the condemnation. We indeed justly, for we receive the due reward of our deeds. But this man has done nothing wrong. And he said to Jesus, Lord, remember me when you come into your kingdom. And Jesus said to him, Verily I say unto you, Today thou shalt be with me in paradise. Now Jesus said, Today you'll be with me in paradise. Now when he died, he didn't go into paradise. The Bible says he went to the lower parts of the earth, which is hell. And if he was to go to paradise that day, meaning he didn't stay long in hell, he was there for a few hours because he assured that man they will be together in paradise that day. And the Bible says he was crucified in the evening, not in the morning, in the evening or later in the day. So what happened in hell? The Bible says in hell, if you go back to that Ephesians chapter 4, Ephesians chapter 4 from verse 8 again, in verse In verse 8, he says, Wherefore, he said, when he ascended on high, he led captivity captive. Meaning, Satan and his demons were the guardians of hell. They were in charge. I pray you don't go there. People who've been there say, they deal, they whip, they punish people. It's horrible. It's horrible. I don't wish it for my enemies. I, I don't even have any enemy. I don't wish it for anyone. I pray you all make heaven. But please, it's not by wishing there are things you must do to get to heaven first you must accept jesus as the only begotten son of god and invite him to your life as your lord and savior second you must live for jesus you must live for jesus now back to the message 
he led captivity captive you remember in the book of revelation from verse 1 chapter 1 verse 18 he said now i have the keys of death and hell meaning satan in hell who was the guardian was stripped of all his authority and he was made now a captive a captor he was now made a prisoner so what jesus said is that satan was a prisoner but before he made satan a prisoner and defeated satan and his demons the bible gives us a clue in psalm 22 when he went into hell the bible says as he entered hell all the demons rushed at him in psalm 22 from verse 11 it says that be not far from me for trouble is near for there is none to help many bulls have compassed me strong bulls of passion have beset me round they gaze upon me with their mouth as a ravening and a roaring lion those are demons now if you also jump to um, verse 16 for dogs have compassed me the assembly of the wicked has enclosed me and they pierce my hands and my feet the assembly of the wicked is not the uh, uh, Roman trial no no he's talking about hell dogs dogs are also called demons also if you look at verse 21 save me from the lion's mouth for you have heard me for you, as thou hast heard me from the horns of unicorn save me from the lion's mouth so that was what was going on here in hell satan attacked him they wanted to punish him but he defeated satan he bound satan and all his demons make them captive so what they used to do to people would chain them he now chained all the demons took the keys of death from the hands of Satan, took the keys of hell from his hand, punished him before all his demons, humiliated and disgraced him before all his demons. Now, I don't have the full details of what happened, but the Bible says that in hell, after he made Satan captivity captive, he now had to cross to paradise. Do you desire to live and operate God's way of doing things? Do you desire to understand how faith works? Fundamentals of Faith is a book written by Kayode Adeshoga. It teaches in simple terms how to operate the God kind of faith that helps you overcome all hurdles of life. Fundamentals of Faith is available for purchase at Trem Bookshop Obani Koro Lagos and Bible Wonderland Stadium Surulere Lagos. Get a copy today. Because remember, he said to the thief, today you'll be with me in paradise. Now, there was no evidence that he came out of the tube to now go into paradise. No, 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 no. That tube leads to hell. There's another one that leads to paradise. But he didn't come out. He had to cross from hell into paradise. Now, people in paradise see what is happening in hell in those days. Because now paradise is in heaven. But in those days before Jesus died... Paradise was in the ground. And to prove that in Luke 16, the Bible says, Abraham in paradise saw the rich man in hell. So those who were in paradise saw those who were in hell. And those who were in hell saw those who were in paradise. And they communicated. Because the Bible says the rich man called Abraham and Abraham answered him. So those in those days, when people are born in hell, they see those who are in paradise and they talk to them. And those who are in paradise can see them and also answer them. So the conversation between Abraham and the rich man took place between Abraham in paradise and the rich man in hell. And in that conversation, Abraham says, no one can cross. There's a goal fixed. There are gates enclosed. No one can cross from hell to paradise. So because he was telling him to send Lazarus to come and help him. And no one can cross from paradise to hell. So what happened? Jesus needed to cross a gulf and a gate that no one has ever, ever crossed. In Psalm 24, we're just trying to look at what happened between that Good Friday and Easter Sunday. We're celebrating the resurrection, but it's not enough to just say he resurrected. We, didn't know, we need to know what happened. Amen. So in Psalm 24, from verse 7, When Jesus wanted to cross from hell to paradise, there are gates there. The Bible calls them the gates of brass 
and the bars of iron. That's why that song says he has broken the gates of brass and cut the bars of iron asunder. There's no, he didn't cut any brass on earth. He didn't cut any gate here on earth. He didn't need to cut any gate in heaven. Heaven's gate is open to all who are saved. They don't cut gates there. They don't bulldoze anything there. So the only place he could have cut the gates of iron, uh, brass asunder, is between hell and paradise. And those gates are spirits. Nobody ever passed through them. It has never happened. So in Psalm 24, verse 7, those gates blocked Jesus from getting into paradise. And he had to get into paradise. So he spoke to the gate and said, Lift up your head, O ye gates, and be ye lifted up, ye everlasting, the everlasting doors. They don't move. And for you to know what Jesus has said, it, and he said, And the king of glory shall come in. There is only one king of glory. That is Jesus. So it is Jesus talking to this gate. Where is the gate? Can heaven stop him from coming in? Never. There is no gate stopping him from coming to the earth. No. So this gate is between hell and heaven. In verse 7, Psalm 24, he commanded the gate to open. And the gate is a spirit. If you remember the book of Ezekiel chapter 1, and I saw chariots with wheels. And those chariots are angels. They are spirits. They are angels in chariot form. And when someone dies, the person sits on that chariot. And that angel, the chariot of fire that took Elijah to heaven, is a spirit. It's not an ordinary car. That's a spirit. It's angels that carried Lazarus. The Bible says Lazarus died, and angels carried him into Abraham's bosom. So those chariots are spirits. There are doors that are spirits. They talk. There are some doors of prosperity they refuse to open to certain people until you address them. Wow. And they say, no, we won't open. And we won't allow him access to what God has given to him. And they have conditions which is compromise. So you have to address them by faith. So in verse 8, when Jesus told the gate to open, the gate asked Jesus a question. Who is this? It's like audacity. Who the, who the hell is that? King of glory. And of course the Lord replied him, I'm the Lord strong and mighty. I'm the Lord mighty in battle. The gate still did not open. Then in verse 9, the Lord spoke to the gate again. Those gates of brass. When he said he has broken the gates of brass, called the brass of iron. All the gates before you, before your prosperity, before what God has prepared for you, they're going to be addressed through speaking. And you must speak through that spirit of faith. God must give you what to say. When you say, those gates will open. And those pastures of the things prepared for you from the foundations of the earth, they will not come to you. Sometimes it's those gates holding people from making it in life. Jesus said to it again in verse 9. Lift up your heads, O ye gates. Even lift them up, ye everlasting doors. And the king of glory shall come in. The gate asks Jesus again. You know when they say, who is the king? is different. Who is this king? That means, who, who the hell is that? That is talking to me. And he says, I'm the Lord of hosts. I am the king of glory. Obviously, at that second time, the gate opened. And for the first time, from eternity, a being crossed from hell to paradise. What did he do in paradise? While he was in hell, this is another point I want to point out. Whatever ministry the Lord gives you on earth is going to continue into eternity. If you're a music minister, you're going to get to heaven. You're still going to be a music minister. You'll be singing. You'll be leading people in praises to God. If you're a teacher of the word, you'll be teaching people the word of God in heaven. There are people who don't learn. These things I'm teaching you, I'm sharing with you, you're supposed to learn it. But there are people who won't go to church, they won't learn. They just leave. When you get to heaven, you're going to learn everything, every single thing. You're still going to be taught. And some people will not be allowed to meet with God until they've learned certain things build their faith up because there's a level of glory you must attain to see God otherwise that person will vaporize so they're still going to learn it so your ministry will continue so John the Baptist must have been telling you know he's the forerunner of Jesus on earth even in the eternity so he must have been telling Abraham Isaac Jacob David and must have pointed to them in hell 
Say, that is he who I spoke to you of. Who I say, who I say he's coming. That is the Lamb of God. He is coming. That is the Son of the Most High God. So, when he got into paradise, they all just fell down and worshipped him. Why? John had told them he's coming. And John, the, the foreigner, whoever, who also said, I am not the Christ, but I am being sent before him to prepare his way. But I've gone to prepare Jesus' way. Because remember, he was beheaded before Jesus died. So, but I've gone to prepare that same way again in paradise. Because they didn't know anything. So, they were waiting for him. So he has told them the master is coming. The Lord is coming. He's coming to take us out of here because they wanted to get out. That is not a beautiful place to be in. They wanted to go into heaven where the streets of gold is. Abraham, Isaac, all of them. God had told them, stay there. I will come and rest. So they didn't know. They waited for about 4,000 years. Probably tired. They just needed to get out of that place. They've seen too much torment. They've, they've fed up. So John said, oh, you have nothing to worry anymore. He's coming. All of you start packing your luggages. We will soon go. And when he saw Jesus in here, that is him. And he must have wondered. Abraham must have said, you know, Abraham told the rich man, there's a great gulf no one can cross. He must have said, how is he going to cross here? How is he going to get here? They must have watched him talk to that gate. They must have heard the gate, replied him, and they must have seen the gate give way. So as soon as he must have stepped into paradise, I'm telling you what I'll do. I'll fall down before him like they do in heaven. If I had a crown, I'll remove it. And I will worship him. Wow, what is this? And I will say to my guys, guys, he is going to take us home. I believe he will take us home. I believe you have been blessed by that message. And I know your faith has been built up. And I know all those challenges in life are all going to fall before you in the mighty name of Jesus. I want you to know Hebrews 12 says, Jesus is the author and the finisher of our faith. You need him in this walk. And so if you're out there and you don't have Jesus in your life, I want you to say after me, say, Dear Lord Jesus, I believe you're the only begotten Son of God. Come into my life, be my Lord and my Savior. It's as simple as that. Displayed on the screen is diverse information on how you can interact and reach out to us. Take advantage of it and I'll be expecting to hear from you. Till I come your way again same time next week, I want to tell you don't give up faith works. It's working and it will work in your life. God bless you.